Today, let's talk about all things math for the 2021-2022 school year. Hi, my name's Jennifer. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'm thankful that you're here. I'm thankful for your time. On my channel, we talk about all things homeschool, and right now, it's all about curriculum. <laughs> I love curriculum and so we are doing videos on how we are planning on utilizing the curriculum that we have chosen for the 2021-2022 homeschool year. Now my daughter is entering fifth grade and we are having so much fun. Also very much a kinesthetic learner. So when we go through our video today, please keep in mind that even though she is in fifth grade, many of the pieces that I'm going to talk about can be used for a little bit lower than fifth grade and a little bit higher than fifth grade because they truly are some great math manipulatives. She learns the best with manipulatives and so we have quite a few. Before I get started, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank Ingrid from the Ingrid Chronicles and Kim the Homeschooling Grammy. I'm so grateful to be able to join them on this collab for um, all things math and how we're planning on using them. So please make sure to check out the links below. I will link Ingrid's channel as well as Kim's channel and also the playlist so you can see how other mamas on teaching math for the 2021-2022 school year. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, last year when my daughter was going into fourth grade, we switched to Singapore math. Um, it was not what I would call the smoothest transition, but it was a good transition and we are thankful that we did it um, when we were talking about what curriculum to use in t this coming year she said i want to stick with singapore and i said that's great so today you are going to see some um, singapore but you're also going to see some other things if you're interested in learning more about our transition how it went um, some of the challenges that we had as well as how we overcame i will link that video here so please make sure to check that out now we are working with singapore as i mentioned we do the dimensions whoops we do the dimensions um, version of singapore so um, this is dimensions we have the 5a this is the teacher's guide now this teacher's guide is set up so more kind of like a classroom they don't have a home instructor's guide but what you do get is you get information on how to teach then the actual picture of the teachers um sorry of the textbook with the answers in here and then um they also give you some activity options for what to do. There are some Black Line Masters online that you can download from the Singapore website. Those are free downloads. And then in this teacher's manual, they will tell you when to utilize those. So again, Singapore, um, as with all other Singapore versions, the Dimensions version comes in the A and the B. So this is the A for the teacher's guide. You have the textbook, which is your textbook. So this is the pictures that I was just showing you. It is full color. They normally do at the beginning of each um, chapter, they do kind of a, why would you use this? Why do you care about this concept? And then they'll walk you through it. So this is the textbook we also have a workbook the workbook is in black and white and then finally we have a test booklet um, the test booklet again black and white and they have the answers at the back of the test booklet um, for each lesson for each unit within the dimensions there are two tests there's an a and a b for each unit so for example for chapter three this would be test a and then for chapter three you also have test b so that's the basics for the dimensions program like i said there is an a and a b so that a is considered first semester b is considered second semester um, if you are thinking about switching 
two dimensions, I would highly recommend doing the placement tests as well as looking at the scope and sequence. So at the beginning of the teacher's manual and online, they have the scope and sequence. So you can see, for example, for 5A, this is what you're going to cover. And then for 5B, you'll start with decimals. And then you'll go through some more decimals, geometry, etc. Now, we are working with the dimensions, but that's not all we're doing. <laughs> so we also are going to be working on mental math um, in fifth grade. So um, Singapore has a mental math workbook that we're going to be doing. Um, this is considered their fourth grade mental math workbook, but I was able to get it off of um, thrift books. And so I went ahead and got the fourth grade one. I think it will serve our purposes. And then I'll, um, there's also the answers in the back. So we'll be working with this workbook. Now, um, when we switched two dimensions in fourth grade, prior to that switch, my daughter was very um, happy with math. She liked doing it. She had what I would call a love of math. And towards the end of last year, um, we were starting to get back to that love of math. Well, I want to really encourage it this year. So I'm trying to um, find some ways to uh, make it more fun. And so what could be more fun than math in comic book format? Beast Academy. So Beast Academy comes with, so you have the guidebook, which is your comic book. Then you have a practice book. And um, this is separated into A through D. So if you look, this is um, 3A, uh, shows you what B, C, and D do, or contain. Now, we did go to three, and the reason why we started with three is last year, we did not focus enough on geometry. So if you look, 3A, their first section is geometry. Well, it's um, shapes. And then we go down and do a little bit. Um, here's perimeter and area. Then we go back to some measurements when we get to D. So what I'm going to do is we're going to alternate between Beast Academy and Singapore. Now, first of all, um, both of them are considered mastery approaches. However, if I'm alternating, then I start at angles with beast. I don't get to area of a triangle until chapter seven um, for Singapore. And then I have chapter 11 is geometry. So even though these are considered master approaches, I'm actually doing some spiraling, trying to throw in some true fun things with that um, with the Beast Academy cartoons, the comic book format, um, which we have already started, and she seems to really enjoy it. Now, I will say that the um, that angle, that first chapter, the first unit on angles, not easy, not not an easy chapter, but it um, does get you thinking, and so that's good. And she really, truly does enjoy that comic book format. Now, Beast Academy has an online program as well as the um, books. We did not get the online program. We only, uh, I only purchased the books, and so we'll see how that goes. Now. That is really what I'm looking at as far as curriculum. But for math, we utilize manipulatives. These are so important in our math day. <laughs> so let's talk manipulatives. <laughs> so first of all, well, let's talk geometry because I've been talking about geometry. So the first thing that I have 
um, are these little pegboards. Um, these are called geo boards. And so what I can use are these rubber bands to uh, make different shapes on the geo boards because there are pegs. On the back of them, it's a different uh, shape. So this is a circle with a peg in the middle. So I think that this would probably be good for like time, um, telling time with clocks or something. But if I use my rubber band, then I can make a triangle and I can use another rubber band to show the relationship with a triangle to a square. So this will be, you know, my right triangle. Then I could also make things like, let's see here, I could do, this would be um, an acute triangle because all of my uh, angles are acute angles. So then I could try to figure out, can I make an equilateral triangle? Can I make, well, here's a, there's a right triangle again. And so we can just do some of these. Um, these are some great ways to do different shapes and then also uh, figure out how these shapes are relational to each other. And so this, um, this is a geo board. So we are having fun with it as well. Next item that I have for geometry that I'm very excited about are these geometric solids. So one of the very cool things about these solids, so you can see we've got lots of different ones, is they are um, two things. First of all, they are re, uh, relational. So for example, here's a cone and here's my cylinder. I can see that these are the same circle sizes. So since I could take off these bases, I can say, well, when the volume, what's the relationship of a cone to a cylinder? So we can fill this with like rice or something. And then we could pour in to see how much it holds with the cone versus a cylinder. And we can talk about, you know, since the circle base is the same size for both of them, what does that mean? We have quite a few different solids in here. So you do have the, this one, and then I believe there is a square. Yep, here's your square pyramid. This also comes with a nice activity guide that helps give uh, different types of activities, <laughs> different types of exercises. So I am looking forward to using this with geometry. For fractions, we are sticking with fraction segments. This comes with multiple fractions from one whole to one twelfth. But the beauty of this is that all of your pies fit in this circle. So they are all the same size, whether it's one whole or you have your three, one third, they will all fit in this. Here we will also be working with percentages some. So I'm going to use these equivalency cubes for percentages as well as decimals, as well as fractions. That's one of the reasons I really like these cubes. You can see, for example, these are all the same size. So one, um, two tenths and five tenths, but then they also show you your percentages. So we can see how percentages relate to decimals as well as to the whole. And so these are great. There are nine cubes included in this. I was gifted um, I was gifted some tiles, and so these are very cool. What I have here are the Division Without Remainder tiles. Now, these can be purchased online. They're about $10. You get quite a few in a packet, and they can just be a PDF download. I believe that they are starting to do some digital with these, but what you would do is you have these cards one or zero through nine and one of each number zero through nine then you just get a tile and for each tile you will use every one of these but only once so for example I can look at this and say what divided by eight equals five well there's my four and my zero tile and then I would have to look and see 14 divided by 
2 equals 7, and I know that there's no remainder. And then down here, I have to figure out what to do with a remainder with my numbers that are, oh, I'm losing my numbers, with my numbers that are left. And so this is really good in just doing a little bit of independent work um, and it being a little different. So I do have these division tiles. I also have the decimal. So with the decimals, this one says, with one set of tiles, zero to nine, form these numbers. The number between three and a half and four, three-fourths of 100. The largest number between one and three using only even digits, and a number less than one-fifth. And so you would do that again, where you have the zero to nine tiles and you can only use each one of them once. These, I've had a lot of fun playing with these um, and learning how to do them, but they're really good for just thinking a little bit outside of the box and really, and really honing some of these skills. Now, what would math be without games? So we're going to be doing some fraction dominoes. We're also continuing with IC10. This is just really good for the number bonds for 10. And so she likes playing this, so we'll keep playing this. We also have prime climb, which I think is really good for some mental math. And then we have um, dice that have multiple different numbers on them, which we have been using these a lot for multiplication as well as fractions. And so we like playing with these as well. And finally, there's just times where we just have fun either measuring angles like this or taking a yardstick outside and measuring things. So anything that we can do with regards to some kinesthetic learning for math we are having so much fun with it so i want to thank you very much for your time today i will include in the description links to many of these resources if you have any questions please make sure that you put them in the comments and i will answer them to the best of my ability if you would like any more details about the materials that i have included in today's video because i know that i did go pretty fast with some of these manipulatives as well as curriculum i would be happy to provide more information please include that in the comments below again i would like to thank ingrid from the ingrid chronicles and kim the homeschooling grammy please make sure you check out their channels as well as the playlist so that we can all get some great ideas for incorporating math next year. I thank you again for the, your time. Please make sure that you are subscribed and hit the like button. I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.